Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to build a crypto tracking app and this is kind of a fun app that we're going to make over multiple parts in a series. There's a lot of concepts that can be taken away from this, uh, such as asset tracking, logging changes, um, calculating total values, etc. So today we'll focus on building a table to track the asset quantities and price. To get started, I've kind of put together a table already that we'll start with, um, with some fields. Now it's not that important that we get all the fields right on the first pass. In fact, I, I recommend, you know, starting simple and as you need to add more fields to it, um, expand on that as you develop your application. So we'll see this evolve over time, but we have an ID field that'll essentially just be a unique identifier for that record. Uh, the type field will check the type um, of investment, investment name, symbol associated with the, the ticker for that, that asset. Uh, we'll go ahead and just call this asset name. Total quantity recorded. Uh, there's a location, so you can last update it and um, finally note section two. for just One thing I just remembered, we'll also want to track the price. So now I'm going to go ahead and create an app. So now that we landed in the app, you can see we have the assets table added here. Now we're going to jump to the columns section next here and expand assets. We can see here that the ID field is, has a unique ID value, um, but we necessarily don't want to show this to the users and we can hide that. And that way we don't have to worry about it showing up in our views. Uh, we have a type field here. For example, let's uh, match the title of our video. Uh, we could do cryptocurrency as an asset. You know, maybe you want to track some um, stocks or uh, even uh, the latest craze NFTs. Um, so we could asset name. I'm going to go ahead and just change this to a text field uh, under symbol. Uh, that's good. Total um, number. I'm going to want to change that to a decimal. Uh, number means integer. Um, so whole numbers only. Uh, last updated. Uh, we'll make sure that that's a date and time um, stamp. All right, so at this point, we've uh, we've characterized our data. We're going to go ahead and, and jump to our views. Um, you know, maybe starting out, starting with a deck view until you get a feel for how you're going to use the app. You know, simply sort by asset name, um, potentially group. We can group by maybe type of asset. For our primary header, we'll choose the asset name as the header, and then secondary header, we can add something like we'll add the total um, quantity for that asset. And maybe in the uh, summary column here, we could put the symbol. But we don't have any data yet, so let's go ahead and just make some example data that we can use as we continue to develop this application. One thing right, right away we notice is the last updated field isn't populated. And um, this is something we're going to want to do anyway automatically and not necessarily have to choose this every time and then um, save that just so we have a record in the system. But I'm going to go back to data and come down to the last updated and edit that uh, the attributes for the last updated field. And I'm going to come down under auto compute app formula. We're going to change app formula there and then we're going to put now. Uh, all right, so now we have our new assets. Uh, field and we can see that we have a first record added. Let's add another um, asset in there, maybe of a different type. Let's call this uh, Amazon. You can see here the last updated is now being recorded. You know, if you don't want to show this to the users, the most efficient way to do that and basically just have it hidden in the background. But we can use the context function uh, in a formula for the show attribute. And for all view types under, you know, setting context view type, we can say we want to show this for everything but uh, a form view. A really simple formula to add in there. So you're not having to manually change your forms automatically. If we were to save that and then try to add an asset again, we can come in here and see that it, that field's gone as well. So it's just a, it's a nice, clean way to make these fields disappear and um, still record that information in the background itself. So with that, that ends uh, part one of this series. Um, you know, check out the part two of this series. We'll go into creating the log file and logging changes that happen to these assets 
automatically using uh, AppSheet's automation system.